All right, well, welcome back to Fierce Network's coverage here at MWC Barcelona. I'm Alejandro Pinedo, and yet another leading voice from the telecom industry is joining us today, Devika Patacharia, Chief Technology and Solutions Officer of Verizon. Devika, thank you for joining us. Thank you, it's great to be here. Absolutely, and Devika, I've heard a lot of AI here at the show. You must be very excited to see front and center. Can you first set the scene for us a little bit? Talk about Gen AI. We've been talking about AI for a little while. Maybe just walk us through the difference between what Gen AI is and traditional AI. Yeah, thank you. It's a great question because for many people, they think that AI is new and that it uh, that it just started last year with uh, ChatGPT. But uh, AI has been around for a long time, and companies like Verizon have been using traditional AI for a long time. And when I say traditional AI, I'm primarily thinking about machine learning and deep learning. Machine learning, which allows machines to to mine through large amounts of data and find insights and and maybe even predict outcomes. And deep learning similar, but it, it's mainly focused on unstructured data like video, audio, etc. And at Verizon we had been looking at traditional AI through a continuum and there are really four steps. First is what we call descriptive, which is understanding like what happened based on the data. The second um, step is is diagnostic to understand like why something happened, followed by predictive to be able to predict the future outcome, and then finally prescriptive. So a lot of this a lot of this work had been happening in how we design our networks, how we look at our customers, how we look at buying behavior, all of that. Generative AI is interesting because it's creating new content that did not exist before. It can be text, it can be images, it could be audio. So now we are starting to combine traditional AI with generative AI to create content, not just to increase productivity internally, but also to create new products and services for our customers. Sure, and I imagine this evolution of AI is creating a lot of opportunities. Now, what we've heard a lot about here at the show is large language models. And I wanted to get your take, specifically from Verizon's point of view and more broadly for our telco customers, and, uh, and partners, what does language, uh, large language models mean and what services does it enable for, for customers? Yeah, so large language models for us, um, and we would use the commercial language models that are, that are available from the likes of Google and AWS and, and others. Um, what that means for us is really to simplify and democratize and make um, telco services easier to use and consume for our customers. So I think about it in two main areas. One is contact center and call center where customers call in. Right now using traditional AI, we can direct them to the best agent. We can look at trends and the reasons they call. But with generative AI and LLMs, now we can make a, a virtual assistant in using conversational um, English or what are different languages to be able to query not just like did you get my bill but is this the right product for me like is there something else do you have a recommendation you know I don't agree with this so really make it more human like um, and then the other area that we're very excited about is how do we make our products and services easier to consume so have a once again like a co-pilot or or an assistant that helps you with product recommendations a virtual sales agent you know, how to onboard, how to set up, troubleshooting, billing questions. And now it spans uh, horizontal aspects of, of a telco um, and the services we provide, which makes it very exciting. Absolutely. It's a lot of the pain points that we hear about as an industry for the customer. It looks like we're getting to a point that we can address them effectively. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's very important because I think simplification yeah. is, is key. And while it might still be complex behind the scenes, uh, in the past we've exposed the complexity to our customers and I think generative AI along with the the advances in traditional AI will help yeah. with that simplification. Now, I wanted to also bring up security. AI obviously will be used to keep our networks and our data secure, but folks on the other side of the equation that mean to harm or cause disruption will likely be using it as well. Yeah. Do you see AI as a net positive? How can we leverage AI to keep all this information safe? Yeah, I think it can be a net positive only if we constantly stay on top of it. Like just as security today, it it's, it's constantly a race between the 
the hackers who are coming up with new ways and new social engineering practices to break through into into networks and into communities, but also staying ahead of it. So we've been hearing about deep fakes and just ensuring that your voice could be created using generative AI, so how to protect ourselves from that. So yes, so generative AI will help us protect, but I think we as humans and using our security consultants need to stay one step ahead because the two would be constantly racing against each other. Yeah. All right, well, Devika, we're just about out of time, but let me ask you this then. When is Verizon going to hand over its network to the machines then? A lot of AI out there, right? I don't think that's going to happen uh, it, not anytime sooner in my lifetime. In fact, we are very focused on keeping a human in the loop because we think that is really the way it's going to way it's going to proceed. So I, I don't see ourselves handing over to the machines. We we'll use the machines to help us, but we would always keep a human in the loop. Silly. Well, there you go. Thank you, Devika, for Thank joining you. us here on Fierce Network. Pleasure. Yeah. Thank you very much.